audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. The last supper that was celebrated between Jesus and his disciples was a Passover Seder. Mm. A Seder, the word Seder just means meal. Passover meal was actually what we call the last supper. Mm, yeah. And a lot of Christians are not aware yeah. of that. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. Every year the Jewish people celebrate the Feast of Passover and close to that time the Christian church around the world celebrates Easter. Many Christians aren't really aware that these two events are actually connected but they've been kept separated for almost 2,000 years. We're going to look at why Passover and Easter are celebrated on different dates. Although Mandy, interestingly, the last couple of years they actually have coincided to some degree which is quite a unique thing, isn't it? It's actually really rare to have the Jewish Passover um, coincide with the celebrations of the Christian Church for Easter. It's very rare. doesn't happen very often at all. There's a really um, interesting reason for that. We're going to look at that during the program. But before we do, I mean, it's pretty... It's just interesting to understand that there were certain feasts or celebrations or anniversaries, whatever you want to call them, that God instituted. And he these became mandatory. There are seven mandatory feasts that God instituted for his people. There are additional feasts like Purim or Hanukkah and uh, that uh, you know all found throughout scripture. But the ones that the Lord instituted, um, they are known as the feasts of the Lord. Uh, and he said these must be kept. Mm. And um, the first of those is the feast of Passover. In Hebrew, they call it Pesach. So, but we will stick with Passover. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to read from Leviticus 23, 4 to 5. It says, These are the appointed times of the Lord. Holy convocation, which you shall proclaim at the times appointed them. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. So the, the Jewish calendar can be a little bit complicated. Uh, they have m- numerous, I think it's about three or four different New Year's oh, right. throughout the year. One is a calendar year. One is the re- start of the religious calendar, which starts with Passover. The other is a new year for trees, <laughs> um, which is actually quite fascinating. But uh, they also have, um, you know, various different things throughout their religious calendar. Uh, but as far as the religious ca- calendar is concerned, it starts with Passover. Mm. And it was the 14th of Nisan. Now, there are actually uh, no references at all in the Bible or in within the first apostolic church. There are no references to Easter. It was always Passover. Mm. And there are many people who actually don't realize that when we make reference to the last supper that was celebrated between Jesus and his disciples uh, before he was arrested and then executed, that was a Passover Seder. Mm. A Seder, the word Seder just means meal. So um, that the Passover meal was actually what we call the Last Supper. Mm, yeah. And a lot of Christians are not aware yeah. of that. Well, you often see that in the text where it says the Passover was approaching or it was the day of preparation. That's all referring to Passover, yeah. which is what uh, what they were actually celebrating when they had that Last Supper. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, you just can't get away from the fact that Jesus was Jewish. He was <laughs> a Jewish rabbi. His apostles and his disciples, were they were Jewish. Mm. And they celebrated all the feasts. Yeah. And um, they, they kept and maintained them and... And you know they obeyed the laws of Moses. You know it. You know the 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 new covenant, the old covenant scriptures. They're all very very Jewish. Mm. But unfortunately, there was a considerable effort within probably the second or third century, or third or fourth centuries, really, by the official church at the time to to sever any kind of Jewish connection. Now, after the apostle. John died. He was the last of the apostles to live. He had his direct disciple was known as Polycarp. And even as early as that, there was this concerted effort to sever the Jewish connection and to try, particularly to try to change the dates on which to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ. And that's when it started to be called Easter. And Polycarp fought against that. He said, no, the date is the 14th of Nisan. It was an appointed time by the Lord. Yeah. But there was this big fracture, and those who wanted to be faithful to 
practicing or celebrating Passover on the 14th of Nisan, they became known as the Quarter Decimans. It's just a fancy Latin word for 14 because it was the 14th of Nisan. Oh, but that's what they became known as. And then as the church became more legalistic or controlling, of they, anybody who didn't fall in line with the official church dogma would either be excommunicated or in, unfortunately, in some cases, they were executed. Wow. And so everybody would be uh, aware of the Council of Nicaea that took place in 325, a first ecumenical council, and they declared there that Easter was never to fall on the same date as the Jewish feast of Passover. That mm-hmm. was an official thing. Now, the, if you read the Nicene Creed, the creed itself is fantastic. Yeah. But I just wanted to read a little bit of an excerpt from Emperor Constantine, who wrote to various different bishops and church leaders who couldn't participate in the council, because at the time you had the Eastern Orthodox, the Western Orthodox Church celebrating Easter at different times. And he wanted to unify the church and say, let's all celebrate at the same time. It, it actually didn't work, because even to this day, they still mm, celebrate yeah, at different right. times. But the anti-Semitic tone of his letter was really quite problematic. I just want to read this. Three short paragraphs that I want to read. It says This is a quote. It was resolved by the united judgment of all present that this feast ought to be kept by all and in every place on one and the same day. For what can be more becoming or honourable to us that this feast, from which we date our hopes of immortality, should be observed unfailingly by all alike according to one ascertained order and arrangement? Okay, one day, just one mm-hmm. day. And first of all, it appeared an unworthy thing that in the celebration of this most holy feast, we should follow the practice of the Jews who have impiously defiled their hands with enormous sin and are therefore deservedly afflicted with blindness of soul. For we have it in our power, if we abandon their custom, to prolong the due observance of this ordinance to future ages by a truer order, which we have preserved from the very day of the Passion until the present time. Let us have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Saviour a different way. A course at once legitimate and honourable lies upon to our most holy religion. Beloved brethren, let us with one consent adopt this course and withdraw ourselves from all participation in their baseness being altogether ignorant of the true adjustment of this question. They sometimes celebrate Easter twice in the same year. Why then should we follow those who are confessedly in grievous error? And it goes on. So you can see that's really <laughs> that's really savage. Yeah, and, um, it doesn't sound much like Paul in Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Let's, uh, no, yeah, it let's was do away with those Jews. Detestable Jews. Yeah. It, was, um, it was really anti-Semitic. And, from, and so what they did was they determined that the the church's Easter celebration had to fall, I think it was either the Friday or the Sunday after the Jewish Passover. Mm. So the fact that in recent years it has actually coincided is very, very rare. But that's, that, that's why there is this, this separation, this severing uh, that has then continued on over the past 2,000 years mm. or just under 2,000 years. It's really, really sad um, that this has happened. And again, as I said, the Eastern Orthodox Church still celebrates its Easter traditions on totally different days to the Mm. Western Orthodox Church. Uh, So the point of this letter really was a bit of a failure. But what did stick was this anti-Semitic attitude of have nothing whatsoever Mm. to do with any kind of a Jewish connection, which is really quite tragic because the significance of the Passover feast and and all the elements within it are so important. I mean, Paul himself in, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians, can't remember the chapter, please forgive me. Uh, We'll get to that in in a few episodes. um, Where he actually calls Jesus our Passover lamb. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so to sever it, we've really done a disservice to the church and the body of Christ. But there has been, in at least the last 50 years in particular, a growing hunger and desire amongst Christians to learn about the Jewish foundations of the faith. Now, one of the reasons many church leaders have rejected wanting to learn this is because of this anti-Semitism. And they may themselves not hate Jewish people, but this anti-Semitic attitude of that it's not important, we don't need it, mm. it's unnecessary. Yeah. Or it's because sometimes Christians who get excited about it, all things Jewish become a little strange <laughs> and we don't want to be weird. It's important, though, to understand these foundations because Christ fulfills every single part mm. of the Passover. It's certainly worth spending a bit of time on. We're going to do that over the next uh, few episodes on foundations. On the next program, we're going to have a history lesson about Passover and what the feast actually commemorates. 
This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.